Hi everyone, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the Video Shop and welcome to the final video in a series of three looking at different ways of animating fonts in After Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this and show you a technique which will help you animate similar fonts. If you've watched the previous two tutorials in this series, you've probably got a good idea of what methods you might use to animate particular font types. I've covered cursive and sans serif fonts, and in this video, I'll show you how to animate brush, marker fonts, and handwritten fonts. I'd call what I'm about to show you a last resort technique. Damn it! When you can't use the trace method. It's killing me to do this. I'd rather slit my throat. And you have absolutely no other choice. If a client asks for a font like this to be properly animated, run like hell. Or maybe try gently to get them to consider a simple sans serif font. If that doesn't work, you can always do what a lot of other people do, which is fudge it. But if you want to do it properly, and we all want to do it properly, right? I'll show you how. Okay, let's get started. This film has been classified 15. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the film. This technique is essentially the same trace method from the first tutorial, but with the added difficulty of splitting up characters and using the crow's layer as a mat. We start with our text in After Effects. Right click on the text layer and select Create, Create Masks or Shapes from Text. Either's fine. Then think about how you want the text to animate on as if we're drawing it physically with a pen. I selected Create Masks from Text, so I've got a solid with masks. Duplicate your solid layer so you have one for each letter, then rename those layers so you know what letter each one refers to. Then delete the masks you don't need on each layer. The masks are named, which makes this process pretty straightforward. The benefit of now having masks rather than a type layer is that you can simplify the font if you like by altering the mask paths. This makes animating it easier and gives you more control over the look. Here I'm using the selection tool to drag over the mask vertex points in the comp window and either delete or move them. Then adjust the bezier handles. You have total control over how the font will look and animate. That's the payoff for the hard work which is coming up. It may also be necessary to add to the mask. So here I need to show the pen moving from the M to the O. So I'm extending the mask to show that pen stroke. Then use the pen tool to trace what will be the first pen stroke by creating a new shape layer on top. Which you can then animate using print paths. I covered this method in my first video, so I won't repeat it here. You will end up with an animated stroke that will need to be thick enough to cover the character. I've renamed the stroke layer Matt M. Then use that layer as a mat for your letter by dragging it above your layer, then selecting Track Mat, Alpha Mat. But as you can see here, it reveals parts of the letter that we don't want to see until our imaginary pen moves further along. So it's necessary to split the letter up into separate parts as I've done here. As you can see, I've got four separate layers for the M alone. But look, I did warn you this was the hard method. So now that we've split the letters up into parts, I'm going to show you two ways to animate them on. First, you can add a set mat effect to the first part of your letter. And in the take mat from layer dropdown, select the animated stroke mat. In this case, it's mat M. And then check it animates on. That's fine. So we can copy and paste that set mat effect to the other letter parts but you might still run into the same problem we had before we split the letter up, where parts of the letter are revealed before we want them to be. It'll all depend on the font that you're working with. So another method is to remove the set mat effect from all your layers and instead duplicate the mat layer, then selecting track mat, alpha mat on all your letter parts. Then for any bits that don't work, you can adjust the start point on the stroke trim. You'll find that the parts of the letter which need splitting often coincide with these keyframes, where the imaginary pen is going from the bottom of a letter part to the top and resting briefly before it carries on. Therefore, the start point of the trim for that letter will be the same as the value of the keyframe for the end point. In this case here, for the last part of the M, I've copied and pasted the value of the end keyframe, which is broadly but not exactly 57%, hence copying and pasting rather than typing it in. And that's what you'll need to do as you go from letter to letter. Tweak and add paths and adjust the match you're using so it looks right. Is your brain hurting yet? I know it's fiddly, but this is the hard method after all. Sometimes in animation, you just have to do the work. There's no cheats. Look, try this yourself, grab the free project file and take a look. 
and I promise it will make sense. As you can see here, I've chosen not to join certain letters, such as the O and the T. You can make your animation as elaborate or simple as you choose within the aesthetic limits of the font. Okay, next we're going to add some interest by giving our text a multicolor effect. Drop your type animation comp onto the new comp icon in the project panel, which will create a comp with the same settings. I'm naming mine Motion Multicolored. And then Ctrl D in your timeline to create duplicates of your type animation pre comp. Add a fill to all of the layers apart from the top one with different colors. Then stagger the layers in your timeline. The shape animations you can check out in the project file. And if there's enough demand, I'll be happy to do a tutorial on that as well. Although there are one or two out there already. Thanks for watching. That's better. As I mentioned, this is the final video in a series of three. I'll be posting other motion design tutorials every Monday, but as I'm talking to you now, this channel has 21 subscribers, one of which is almost certainly my mum. So I'll just say very quickly, Look at your heart. I'm praying to you. Do leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to see a tutorial on in the future, and tag me on Instagram if you use these techniques in your work. I'd love to see what you come up with. You can find other tutorials on this channel and details of upcoming courses on my website. Thanks again for watching. See you again next time.